Hey, I'm very excited to introduce today Arnold 6.2. I will be showing you the new features. They introduced new bloom effects to Arnold imagers. They updated the standard surface shaders. They updated the M2A render view. And I will be showing you a few more tricks and features they added to the release of Arnold 6.2. So be sure to check out today's video to not miss a beat. All right, so now let's check it out a bit more in detail. So obviously the big feature announcement is the imagers, which are now um, supported by Bloom and you have a few others. Um, and the big one is you have optics and Arnold denoising right within your imagers, which is quite amazing because you can get the denoise result right away and you don't need to set up a post process. Um, but there are a few, actually a lot of different other th things which got updated. Um, one of them are being um, the Open ColorEye 2.0 uh, support, which is quite amazing. Um, they changed the defaults for the AI standard surface, which is a big thing. I asked for this a few times and finally they removed this point, uh, 0 0.8 default to a 1.0 default, which is amazing. Also um, improved progressive sampling, which is um, a lot faster, especially the adaptive one. Um, is now up to 20% uh, uh, 20x faster. So it's a huge improvement in, in terms of speed. Uh, TX processes are faster. Um, OSL shader metadata is, is uh, supported now. Um, what else? Crash reporting, like minor things, which is good for the devs though, is uh, accurate crash reporting. And lots of GPU improvements as well. Um, um, time to first pixel got improved. Lots of USD things. Um, and then a few incompatible changes. Um, and obviously, again, always bug fixes, um, things we report get fixed, which is amazing. So first of all, I wanna thank the whole Arnold team for their amazing work. So anyways, let's just di uh, dive into the first um, thing, which is the Arnold imagers, right? Um, it's a quite nice feature, which got added. Um, and yeah, lots of uh, things to play around with. So with the Arnold um, Core Update 6.2 M2A420, um, they changed a few things how images work. So before you just had in your render settings, this drop down where you can just add the images and you can see we have a few more. We've got noise, optics, um, lens effects got new things, light mixers, I think a new one. Um, but now the cool thing is uh, when you have your render view open, you can click the cock in the top right corner and you can see now you have these images in here too. So that is quite nice because you can then um, actually work with this in full screen mode and you have all the controls you need. Um, before we start something with the images, it is important to know how they work. And the thing is you have to add them prior to kicking off the render because a few of those, especially the denoising ones and also the light mixer, they need certain AOVs before the render starts. So it is important to create the images beforehand. And let's just um, start maybe um, with the denoising first. So I'm just dropping the optics, uh, sorry, the denoiser noise in here. All right, so now you can see we have in render denoising and if I toggle it off, if you click on the imager here in the post menu, you can just tick um, the disable button there or down here. Uh, you will now see the difference. Now it's uh, the raw render and when I click it again, you can see that the denoiser is being kicked off again and everything will be denoised. And now the image is clean again. So that is quite nice. So now let's add the next one and I like to always add a color correct and probably we wanna do um, the lens effects as well. We can talk about the others in a bit. So let me just stop the render and make sure we add them. So color correct. So we first denoise the image, right? So that's the order of um, sequence here. So first denoising, then we do the color correction, then we do lens effects on top. And we can also do a white balance, which is nice to get the warm tones uh, working correct. And you can just stack them. And then obviously you just start the render again and then you can tweak things. The cool thing is you can actually um, just uh, do a region as well. So um, if I just select this region here, do a render, uh, this will start um, off the render and everything will um, be generated. So now we have this little region generated and now essentially I can go to the color correct node and say, um, I want to, I don't know, gamma it down and everything uh, is updated in the render view, which is quite nice. Um, so what I like to do, um, I like to work in the shadows and lift them because in, in, in CGI everything is quite crushed in the black. So you always want to lift the shadows a little bit. But let's just render the whole image quickly to be um, able to adjust it better. 
All right, so now let's uh, lift the blacks a little bit and the shadows, for instance, right? So um, let's go to the shadow pass. I'm not sure why it's selecting. Anyways, and then we can go to the offset and we can just lift um, the blacks a little. And you can see the, <clears throat> the image just gets a little bit brighter in the shadow tones. Another thing which you should consider is um, to disable the denoising because it will always update all the images whenever you do a little change. So that's maybe something that I should need to adjust and to only update the images which have been changed. So for now I'm just disabling the denoising and now um, the color correction should be a lot faster. You can see now it's on and off and you can see just adding this little bit of um, lift in the shadows just does so much to the image if I compare this. It's nice already, it's, it feels a bit more fit in. So let's just lift them up a little bit more, maybe go to 0 0.02. And I think this already works quite well. Um, and then you can also obviously color correct the shadows to make them a bit more bluish. So you have lots of little comp control right within the render. So now let's jump to the next um, very exciting one which is the lens effects. So on default it's disabled, nothing is there, but you can see we have vignetting. So if I bring that up, you can see now it, it feels like the lens is actually cropping in and you can play around with the value um, to just get that little bit, bit of vignetting. So this already looks a way more um, polished. So before and um, after is with the vignetting. So now let's get onto the bloom. Bloom is essentially a glow post effect, which just um, lifts the highlights and creates a glow around them. So let's go to bloom strength of one. You can see now everything starts to uh, glow away. Um, it's probably way too much, um, but I always like to go a bit extreme, dial it in and then dial it back down. I want a larger radius. So let's maybe go on 20 for the bloom radius, which should give us a way broader highlight. And again, it's too strong, but this is a good um, starting point. The threshold is um, at, what, at, at what kind of brightness it should kick in. So everything above 0.9 will be affected. If I go to maybe 9.9, .9, you will only get the really hot pings affected. And this is obviously um, depends on how much you want to see. If you go really low, the whole image will just start to glow. So you need to make sure your threshold is set into a good uh, position. I think this is quite good. Obviously, again, this is too strong. So let's maybe go down on 0.2 for the strength. And now you you will start to see it kind of works. It's almost um, almost um, physically accurate with you, the bloom around those highlights. You can probably go a bit larger in the in the radius just to make this um, highlight a bit wider, and then maybe reduce the intensity. And I think this already works quite well. So if I disable this, you can see now um, we get a nice blooming, and it feels very integrated. And next up, you, I can see that the plate is quite warm. So on the white balance option, you can play around with those presets. You have like all these built in ones, which I'm not sure what they are set to, um, but it's, you can see now it got a bit warmer. The thing though is it's affecting the whole image. So even out my plate now will get even warmer and potentially um, you would only want the render um, to be affected by the imager. But I think this should maybe be an option for a, f a future update to be able to just pick certain areas or maybe just the alpha or provide an alpha. Again, right now, everything is being affected. Um, but it, it looks cool, it's nice and warm. You can probably go to, um, instead of Illuminant, uh, pick your own temperature. And if you want it to be more blue, you will go higher than 6,500. Um, oh, it's it's counter correcting. Okay, so you actually specifying the temperature and then it uh, corrects it to it. So if you want it to be blue, you should go lower, which means it will um, change the lens and make it more blue. Um, so yeah, so you probably want to go around 7000 to make it a little bit warm. And I think this works quite well. So if we're, I disable this, um, this is now without the white balance adjustment and if I bring it back you can see now it's a little bit warmer and it feels a bit more photographic. And comparing this to my previous one, this is this doesn't have it, this does not have vignetting. So with that stuff on top it might look a little bit better already. Um, so um, another thing is they added something called light mixer which is quite amazing. You can in render change the lighting which is super nice. Uh, for that to work, we will switch into a different environment, which is a studio environment, and then we can uh, play around with those controls a little.
All right, so now I have the light mixer and I have a rendered image. So now it automatically detects um, all the light groups you have set up. So on each light, what I did, um, I was going into its uh, parameters here and adding those light groups. So I have a key and I have headlights and I have the environment and they get automatically populated. And you can now see if I go to the headlight, I can essentially solo that and I can see what this light is doing can do that for this light and for the environment light. It's super convenient. And let's say I want to change um, the key light to be a lot warmer. All we have to do now is click on the tint, um, go to a warm color, maybe this pick this yellow, uh, maybe go a bit to the orange tones and hit done. And then you can see now we have this yellow reflections on everything. And um, for instance, the same with the headlights, we can obviously um, bump up the exposure uh, make it, I don't know, a bit more bluish, something like that. Make sure your intensity is always to at one unless you want to um, reduce it, but the color should not change the value, only the saturation and the hue. Confirm that and now we have a little blue light here. So now how does it work with a bloom or like a lens effect on top of this? So let's bring that back. All right, so now you can see we have a bloom on top of everything based on our previous settings. So obviously we can now crank up the settings if we want to go higher on the bloom and you can see it's definitely more glowy now. And the cool thing is they work together. So let's say I want to change my headlights to be not blue, but maybe something different. Um, I don't know, let's go to like a warm tone and then also the bloom is updated. So everything works quite well together. And I like um, the way um, you can get to a very good looking render right out of the box. And honestly, like I like this quite a lot. I love, love the bloom, it feels very natural. And yeah, I hope um, this was great introduction to the imagers. And obviously there are a few more which you can check out. Feel free to ask me any questions on my Discord, which is the, in the link in the description below as well. What a great new update from Arnold. I really enjoy working with the imagers and obviously adaptive sampling is finally great to work with. I played around with Arnold GPU and it's really so much faster than in the previous versions. It's really fun to just be able to work on the GPU or on the CPU with uh, no pixel difference. It's quite refreshing and it's I think uh, the way to go forward. And again, if you guys want to learn more about the stuff I do, I do have a um, growing uh, Discord server, so be sure to check it out to uh, be part of our new challenges and our brand new communities. So I hope I will see everyone in my next video and talk to you soon.